Hi there, Heather here from Woman Up Global. Today I want to talk about gratitude. I know it's not something new and I'm sure you've heard of it many times, but are you practicing it? It may sound corny, but research has shown that you'll be happier if you practice an attitude of gratitude. I know, not something totally mind-blowing, but it's been scientifically proven expressing gratitude increases your happiness by a lot. I know that when I was living a life of just existing, I wasn't grateful for much. Instead, I complained about the long drive I had to make each day into the city to go to my job. I got exasperated with the traffic and usually ended up getting into the office frustrated. So then of course my day continued to go downhill because I was in such a bad state of mind. I got annoyed with co-workers who weren't doing what they were supposed to do and with the company for treating many of the staff so poorly. And you know, on and on and on. By the time I got home at night, I was one wound up pissed off gal, which of course negatively affected my relationship with my husband. But once I learned the importance of such a simple thing as being grateful, my life began to change. I used that long drive as my me time. I listened to CDs to learn about new things and how to live better. And because I was changing my mindset, the traffic didn't bother me. I began being grateful for the luxury BMW I was driving and for the job that gave me such a great paycheck. I looked at my coworkers and wondered, how can I help them rather than criticize them? I got home at night and thanked my husband for cooking dinner and all the things he did around the house. And what I noticed was the more I expressed my gratitude and recognized my gratitude, the better my life got. The average person likely associates gratitude with saying thank you for a gift or for some kind of assistance that they received. But it is so much more than that. Robert Emmons, a prominent researcher and writer about gratitude, defines it as a felt sense of wonder, thankfulness, and appreciation of life. So what is gratitude? Well, it's many things to many people. It's appreciation, it is wonder, it is looking on the bright side of things, it's grasping abundance, it is thanking someone, it's counting blessings, it's not taking things for granted, it is coping, and it is present oriented. The practice of gratitude also involves focusing on the present moment, on appreciating your life as it is today, right now, and what has made it that way. What else does gratitude do for you? Well, it makes you happier, gives you more energy, and you tend to be more helpful, plus you have more positive, frequent emotions. You're likely to be less depressed, less anxious, less lonely, and less envious. All very compelling reasons to start practicing gratitude immediately, right? So here's four ways practicing gratitude positively works to make your life better. The first is about enjoying life's positive experiences. By taking pleasure in some of the gifts of your life, you will be able to get the maximum possible enjoyment and satisfaction from your current circumstances. I've recently become a grandmother, something that brings me so much joy because I really take pleasure in enjoying my granddaughter. When I think back to my own days in motherhood, I wonder how much joy I missed because I was overwhelmed with caring for a screaming child while being sleepless. I know I didn't take the time to feel grateful for the small miracle and enjoy the magic of all those small moments. The second way expressing gratitude positively affects your life is that it increases self-worth and self-esteem. When you realize how much you've accomplished or how much people have done for you, you feel more confident and worthwhile. Unfortunately, for many people, it's, it's much more natural just to focus on mistakes and disappointments or on other people's insults or snubs. Gratefulness can help you 
unlearn this habit. Instead of automatically thinking, poor me or stupid me, in response to a stumbling block, the practice of gratitude encourages you instead to think about what's important in your life and how you're thankful that things aren't worse. The third great thing about gratitude is that it helps you cope with stress and trauma better. Interestingly, people instinctively express gratitude when faced with adversity. In the days immediately following 9-11, gratitude was found to be the second most commonly experienced emotion. Sympathy was first. Expressing gratefulness during personal adversity, like loss or chronic illness, as hard as it might be, can help you adjust, move on, and perhaps start over. Although it may be challenging to celebrate your blessings at moments when they seem the least evident to you, it may be the most important thing you can do for yourself. And the fourth thing is that the practice of gratitude is incompatible with negative emotions. It's hard to feel guilty or envious, resentful, angry, or bitter when you're feeling grateful. Gratitude actually diminishes or even dissolves those negative emotions. Okay, so now that you know why you need to practice gratitude, let's talk about some ways you can actually do it. One of my favorite gratitude activities is writing five things I'm grateful for in my journal. I do this nightly before I go to bed. I write little things like, I'm thankful for the butterfly I saw today. I'm thankful for the woman who held the door for me. I'm grateful for my husband doing the laundry. Of course, I also write down the bigger things like being grateful for a speaking engagement I received, for the new clients that came on board, or for the home I get to live in. If you're not a writer, there are all kinds of gratitude apps out there that you can download and use. Another thing I've done is created a giving thanks box. You can also use a jar. You know, get little pieces of paper and put them beside your jar or your box. And then every time you're grateful for something, write that down in the piece of paper and put it in your jar or box. You know, get your family involved. And then, at a specified time, sit down with the family and read the cards together. One Christmas, I made these and gave them as gifts to my sisters, and they loved them. You could also create a collage using pictures of things you're grateful for. Or something really simple, like each morning when you're enjoying your coffee or your cup of tea, spend a few minutes thinking of all the things you're grateful for. How about sitting down and writing a letter to someone who's exerted a positive influence in your life, but whom you haven't thanked yet? Think how that would make both of you feel. Why not get yourself a charm bracelet and choose charms or trinkets that are meaningful to you? For example, you can have a charm shaped like a heart to symbolize your significant other, figurines to represent different family members, an apple to represent health, a dollar sign to symbolize financial security. How about something as simple as going for a walk and seeing how many positive things you can find? The smell of freshly baked donuts coming from the bakery, flowers growing, children laughing. The key is find the thing that you're likely going to keep doing. When you first start doing this, you may miss days. At first, it might be difficult to think of things you're grateful for. But the more you practice this, the easier it's going to get. Just start by doing something simple. Okay, ready to start being grateful? Take a few minutes right now and write down five things you're grateful for. As you continue to make this a daily practice, you'll begin to start living a life unleashed. <laughs>